I think Chargers cornerback Michael Davis is the most underrated player in the NFL. He re-entered the starting lineup after J.C. Jackson got injured in week seven, and he had the best season of his career by far. He had 12 pass breakups and an interception. He had the lowest open target rate among NFL corners, and he ranked fifth in wins above replacement. If you look at anything besides just raw interception numbers, Michael Davis was one of the best corners in the NFL last year, and he had one of the more difficult jobs across the league with the majority of his snaps and press man. So it's always hard to gauge exactly exactly how underrated a player is, but I've only heard one non-Chargers person even mention Michael Davis. When you search him on Google, you get the director for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, and his tape last year was better than a lot of corners that get way more recognition. Michael Davis plays about as much press coverage as you'll ever see for an NFL corner, and this is a common theme with the Vangio adjacent defenses. Brandon Saley comes from the Vangio tree, and they still run a good amount of match coverage, but what makes those coverage calls effective is having a reliable press man corner who can take away the X receiver and allow you to devote coverage resources to other places. This is a good example here. The Rams are in a three by one formation and the Chargers are playing quarters coverage, but against trips with the back staying in to protect, it's basically a six on three to the passing strength with Michael Davis playing press man on the boundary. They're running a sim pressure with the linebacker blitzing and the end replacing him in coverage. They've got the weak safety buzzing down to play inside on anything coming across the formation. Saley can really call whatever he wants to the 75% of the field away from Michael Davis, but it only works if he can rely on his backside corner to take away the X. So Davis starts with a soft inside hand punch to close off an inside release, but when the receiver releases outside, Davis pulls his hand back and kick slides to recover his leverage. And then once the receiver fully attacks the outside and gets within reach, Davis punches with the offhand to delay the route, and he's disruptive at the catch point so the receiver doesn't have room to bring it in. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, and also follow us on all of our social medias, the links to those are in the description. You'll see this concept come up a lot across most defensive schemes where the call might technically be a zone or match coverage, but the outside corners are playing man 90% of the time. This is how they use Pat Sertan in Denver, for example, and there's a bunch of different terminology for how to play specific techniques. Meg stands for man everywhere he goes, so just straight up man coverage. A lot of times in quarters, the corners will have a mod call, which stands for man on deep. So if the receiver releases vertically, you're in man, but if he's quick in inside, you pass off the route and get depth. And a similar call is mess, which stands for man except shallow, and that's usually a cover three specific technique. So all the different calls and adjustments aren't that important for this video. The main point is that LA's defensive strategy is to cloud up everything on the strong side, force the quarterback to move to the ISO route from the X, and trust Michael Davis to hold up on an island. He does a really good job of picking his battles and understanding when to be aggressive and when to be patient. So when he's covering a tight end where he knows he's going to have the speed advantage, he can afford to be over aggressive at the line of scrimmage because he isn't worried about getting beat over the top. So right here he's in press on Mike Kosicki. He gives an aggressive two-hand punch where he totally commits with his feet. He starts out in a head-up alignment and by the end of his punch he's a shade inside giving the receiver a free release to the outside. You would almost never play a receiver like this. They'd be able to stack you downfield easily but against a tight end, even a very athletic one, he can be physical disrupting the release, give Tua what he thinks is a good matchup to target with an out-of-position corner but then quickly turn his hips and recover downfield. On this play, again, he's covering a tight end. He's got inside help, so he can use this quick outside hand punch where he steps forward with the right foot and opens up inside because if Higby ran a slant, the safety's right over the top ready to break on it, but he doesn't have outside help other than the sideline, so once he lands that first punch, he has to step replace laterally to get back over the top and defend a fade route. So off of this first step, he plants the inside foot, slides in front of the route, and reestablishes contact with a two hand punch and then he undercuts the route and breaks up the pass. Another example here where he's able to be more physical at the line of scrimmage, he's in press coverage on Cortland Sutton. He gives an early punch and then gets into trail technique where he's leveraged underneath and outside and he can do this because he has inside help over the top from Gilman rotating over to the deep middle. So all he has to do is stay on his outside hip and deny the corner or deep out. If Sutton decides to convert this to a post, he'd be running straight into the deep safety. So he just maintains outside leverage and Wilson doesn't have any where to throw. The Dolphins run a lot of quick in-breaking passing concepts, and in their week 14 matchup, Davis did a great job of pressing those routes and sealing off inside releases. So right here, Miami uses this run action to overload the left side of the formation and widen out these underneath defenders, which is designed to create space over the middle of the field for the slant. Davis has his hands ready to catch the release in either direction, so when Tyreek releases inside, he's running directly into his punch. He does a good job mirroring the route with his feet, and he repositions his outside hand to 
reach over the top and rake at the ball. Here's another play where he's just on an island. The Dolphins motion into four by one. So you basically have two plays going on simultaneously. You've got the entire Charger secondary covering this four man concept on the left and Michael Davis in man coverage versus Jalen Waddle. Tua decides to take the one on one, but Davis is able to stay over the top of the double move and force an incompletion. So as a press corner, Michael Davis does pretty much everything at a high level. He can play aggressive bump and run where he's smothering routes at the line of scrimmage, but he's just as good with his footwork and hand play placement and he has answers for every situation and every route. And it is a smaller sample size, but I was also impressed with his off coverage and his ability to perfectly time when he plays the ball. Right here, he's breaking on this hook route and it's so easy in these situations to reach the catch point too early because he doesn't have much space to travel. So he has to consciously slow play his movement, but he leads with the outside hand, wraps over the top and breaks up the pass while minimizing the contact he makes with the receiver. On this play, he makes a clean break on this speed out from Cortland Sutton. Again, perfect timing to get this inside hand on the ball right when it reaches the receiver. Receiver. And then this is a really nice play from the Falcons game. If you watch my video on Drake London, you know that these sluggo routes are pretty much the only way they get him the ball downfield. So good job by Michael Davis of recognizing the double move, squaring up with the break, and then replacing his punch to stay on top of the route. Now, every single cornerback in the NFL gets beat, including Michael Davis. He had this play against Tyreek Hill where the coverage is actually pretty solid, but when he's looking up to find the ball, he gets tripped up and Tyreek scores a touchdown. And then he gave one up to Cortland Sutton here where he just over pursues inside. And when Sutton breaks to the corner, he loses balance. But two bad plays on almost 500 coverage snaps, I think you can definitely live with that. Michael Davis is one of the players I'm most excited to watch this year because he's been a solid corner, but last season was a clear step up from everything we've seen from his career and cornerbacks a fairly unstable position in terms of year-to-year -year performance so there's a chance this was just a flash in the pan but I think what Michael Davis put on tape last year is translatable moving forward and assuming he stays in this press heavy role I expect he'll be able to replicate his breakout performance from 2022. Thanks for watching if you enjoy the video make sure to like and subscribe also let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.